morning, everyone. My name is Carmelo Arcilia. I'm the executive director of the Civil Aeronautics Board of the Philippines. Um, I'm sorry that I do not have a presentation. In fact, I was a little unsettled um, last night because I was mixed up with the topic that I was supposed to discuss. And I found out that the initial topic that was assigned to me was about airport regulation, of which I am not, uh, you know, I do not directly work in airport regulation. I, um, my office regulates the commercial aspect and economic aspect of civil aviation in the Philippines. So, I will try to address the, the subject matters um, and make it worth your while. Um, the CAB uh, regulates the commercial or regulates the airlines. We look at the fares. We are at the forefront of air services negotiations. We review the fares. And uh, recently, because of the very robust growth in traffic in the Philippines, we are focusing on passenger protection. We are um, one of the first countries to have a comprehensive set of rules about passenger protection. Um, we are also one of the fastest growing aviation markets in the world. We are experiencing mostly double-digit um, double growth every year. Last year we had something like uh, more than 27 million passengers in the domestic sector and almost 27 million passengers in the international sector. So that we had almost uh, or more than 54 million passengers in 2018. And uh, the reason why we're focused on passenger protection is that there are many first-time travelers in the Philippines. Um, thanks to the success of the low-cost model in the Philippines, the penetration of the LCC in, in the Philippines is 62% uh, in the domestic market about 33% in the international market, so that's pretty big. Uh, and so the need for um, clear passenger protection uh, regulation. So, airports in the Philippines, uh, Manila is, uh, there is a con over concentration of traffic in Manila. About 87% of international traffic is served in Manila. And I think this is one of the highest in the world in terms of percentage. Even if you look at major hubs like Heathrow, I think the uh, concentration of traffic there would be about 65%. So our thrust, our program, is to uh, develop our alternative gateways and thus the build, build, build program of the government. We have new airports outside of Manila, very modern ones. In fact, the airport in Manila is lagging behind. Of course, we are building a showcase airport 22 kilometers away from Manila. At Bulacan, it will be the new Manila International Airport. So, we're growing fast, as I said, and also the need for more infrastructure. So let me put uh, a little perspective on, on the topic of uh, airport regulation. You and I know that air transport is the lifeline of every state. And uh, they say that it is the blood circulatory system of uh, the world, the global community. It allows for the exchange of uh, people and goods. I cannot imagine a world you cannot imagine a world where there is no air transport. It allows for massive uh, investments, cross-border investments, tourism, trade, and public convenience. So, 
going to this issue of uh, airport regulation, the, the trend uh, in, in recent years is what we call privatization of airports, private participation in airport projects, uh, ONM, Operation and Management. In reality, when you say privatization, it connotes a um, ownership by a private entity of an airport infrastructure and maybe also the operation and management. In reality, it's a rarity in the world. The, the more common <coughs> mode of um, private, public-private partnership would be private participation. And uh, private participation would take the form of maybe management contract, lease agreement, and even minority transfer of ownership to uh, airport uh, entities. No? So this is also what is happening in, uh, in, in the Philippines. No? And what is the reason for this uh, tide of uh, public participation in airports? Well, number one is the fact that most countries are financially constrained. No? The access to capital markets would be difficult. But here comes the private companies. They have finances. And so the government now tends to transfer the, the, the performance of these airport programs to the private sector. And another advantage for the government is the fact that a profitable airport generates revenues for the government. So, uh, two birds in one shot. And then maybe another significant factor in the growth of public participation or private participation in airport development is the fact that there is now an emergence of a global airport management industry. In fact, in the Philippines, our uh, second busiest airport, um, Cebu, Cebu or Mactan Cebu Airport, serves about or more than 11 million passengers. Davao would be number three with more than four million. Mactan Cebu Airport is now managed and operated by GMR of India. It's a, it's a global uh, airport management company. They are also building the new terminal in Clark International Airport. And um, they're not taking over the operations and management there, but there is a consortium of uh, Filipino companies that won the bid for um, the operation and management of Clark Airport. Another example of a private-public partnership would be Katiklan Airport, which is operated by one of the biggest conglomerates, uh, the Philippine San Miguel Corporation. And we have seen how uh, we have seen how these airports, which are privately managed, we saw how they grew. <coughs> Sorry, we saw how they grow, how they blossom. Because you know they are profit oriented. Uh, I have to admit, as a bureaucrat. But the government is not really very good at operating utilities. You know, we are good at regulating, but not necessarily operating utilities. But a profit-oriented uh, entity, you know, sells the airport, they go out of the box, or go out of the box, they innovate, they adopt modern technology in order to sell the airport. And Mactan Airport uh, saw a, a very dramatic growth in traffic when it was operated by a private entity. And so we see the, the value of uh, privatizing or private participation in airports. But of course, um, privatization has its, has its cost, I mean downside and benefits. No? Because when you allow a private entity to operate an airport, of course, the, the operator would be prone 
to abusing the because it's profit oriented then there is a tendency or possibility of um, you know unreasonably high charges um, discrimination in access to the airport and other uh, problems that uh, you know that that are attached to being a, a profit-oriented private enterprise. And so here comes regulation. Um, the IKO has laid down principles, and the, the Philippines is a member of the IKO, that would assure that uh, <clears throat> there would be competition, there would be uh, reasonableness in charges, there would be protection for the users of the airport, and as a member of the IKO, we adhere to these principles. It is uh, implic implicitly written in our laws. And um, today, the Civil Aeronautics or the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, which is the uh, agency responsible for the technical and safety regulation of, of uh, aviation in the Philippines, is tasked under its mandate to fix the user charges for the airports, navigation facilities, and uh, the issue also permits for private airports to operate. No. But uh, the I IKO requires an independent body exclusively um, doing airport regulation no, because Whereas the IKO allows private entities <coughs> to um, operate <coughs> and manage airports, the responsibility for adhering to the principles of the IKO rests with the state. And so the need for an independent oversight agency. And uh, we are uh, treading into that path no? because we are now embarking on many private uh, public uh, partnership airport pro uh, uh, programs and uh, projects. And so there is now a bill in Congress which is called the Philippine Airport Development Bill, uh, Corporation Bill. And the purpose of this is to create an independent